All right, so uh, I'm Jonathan Eisen from UC Davis, uh, and I am chairing this panel here, or attempting to chair this panel here. Um, and uh, the goal here is to talk about um, charting MOBI research priorities for the future. Um, and we have uh, three panelists. Claire Frazier was supposed to be on the panel, but she could not attend uh, due to a family illness. Um, and so we have a wonderful replacement for her, Rachel Adams, um, who is sitting next to me, and also uh, Amy Pruden and Jordan Peccia um, on the panel. Um, and uh, we have a, a few questions that I sort of gathered together from people on Twitter and from some of the discussions that have happened here and also from a few recent publications in the Moby area, but I'm hoping that we can engage some of the audience more both in the discussion and in some of the questions. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to just make a general statement about anything first or should we just launch into discussion? Do you have thoughts on what you think, or here, what do you think is the, mo the single most important thing that we need to do for charting Moby research priorities? If anything. Single most important thing to do is um, I think to, to uh, find the practical needs and start to work on addressing those. Along those lines, I think um, we need to engage more with the public to identify what those practical needs are. I think we've obtained a great deal of baseline information and we have understanding it as scientists as some of the public health issues, but also you know, moving forward with funding, a lot of that's going to depend on whether the, the public values what we do. And so, yeah, I agree with practical needs. Uh, I would I would add um, not necessarily an idea, but uh, a lot of the research uh, agenda now has been sort of top down, and I'm curious to see now that it's potential to go back to each of the different subdisciplines, what um, what those research priorities become, and um, if there is a renewed interest in integra integration and collaboration. And in terms of both um, that and uh, practical areas, like w what do you, we've heard some here of sort of practical needs at, at the meeting. Are, is there like a hit list of the top five things or whatever that people, top 10 that people think are the next wave coming up in the future? Like we've heard a lot about allergy and asthma and the built environment microbiome. And I think it's very clear from the basic science, the epidemiology, and the related research that that's got to be a, a, an area of interest in the future. Are there um, other topics that we either haven't heard about or only heard about peripherally that would get to the front, like you know, water systems and pathogens in the water systems? We've heard about that too, but are there other ones that maybe we haven't heard a lot about, but you think are practical areas that could interest the public and that could drive microbiome of the built environment research areas? I, I think one, we, we've, we've talked about it, but one area is uh, using, the potential of using microbiomes to identify and diagnose when a building is in the process of failing and going to make you sick. So the there's a lot more to explore in terms of water damage in buildings um, and how to fix that, that step. I think also, um, you know, the technology is moving very fast with smartphones and sensors. And um, I think people, uh, in terms of citizen science, like more on the affluent side, just out of curiosity, people will want to sequence their microbiome, maybe have sensors on their tap water and tell them uh, what their microbiome is. 
I know we just sequenced my daughter's uh, DNA, her, her genome, and it was just so much fun and so fascinating. And I, I can see, and it's, it's already happening, that people want, will want their various uh, human and environment microbiome sequenced. Um, I think as scientists, we need to be ahead of that curve and prepared so that you know, people aren't misinformed and that we can work together with the public to um, advance the science in that way. I think this group could make large contributions to hospital-associated infections as, as one um, clear, clear large problem that's existing and important. But I also see that, um, you know, there's, a, there's an energy hump to get over, and we're certainly not over that yet. But we tend to uh, tolerate infectious disease in our personal lives and in our homes, certain types of infectious disease. We don't really like infectious disease from food, but maybe it's okay. We hate infectious disease from water, but we seem to be comfortable with infectious disease from air and surfaces. And so, you know, all of us get a few uh, respiratory infections per year. Our children get many more. Um, and if we have children, we get many more. And um, that adds up to about a billion a year in the United States. And it's a problem we seem to have more agreed to be okay with than to address. And uh, I think, again, if we can get to the point where we think we maybe actually can make that better, this community could help a lot. So, so for, for that and the related topics, what do we need to do to get to that point? Do we need sensors in everybody's kitchen and cell phone and, you know, on their mask that they're wearing or, or, or whatever and better diagnosed? I mean, what do, what do we need to do to get to the point where that is a practical thing that can happen, like as a public health effort, for example? Or I, so I, I think, and I put this as a research need, but maybe not a practical research need. The th the thing that gets said a lot is that we don't know what a healthy microbiome is, and that's partly because we don't know what the right microorganisms are, and if we, even if we did, we don't know if they're right for the right type of people. And then they say, but even if we did know, we have no idea how to control this in a building. But I think learning how to control microbial exposure in a building is a partially solvable problem. And I say that mostly because a lot of the exposure to microbes in buildings is because of the physical, you know, physical processes that partition microbes from air to surfaces, resuspension, deposition, ventilation. And uh, I, we've, we've touched on the surface, but I think we can do better at understanding how we can control our exposures through those physical parameters. I was also thinking, you know, finishing uh, or furthering the, the citizen science aspect that um, a lot of the people that suffer the most aren't the affluent ones that may be able to afford these sensors or you know, explore their children's DNA. Um, but they're the ones that you know, have the asthma, the diabetes, um, illnesses that you know, maybe they're not even aware that uh, that they're experiencing these to a greater degree. And I, and I don't know that I have the answers other than I think it's, it's very critical to, to consider low income and minority groups and, and make sure that they're, they're not left behind in the built environment microbiome revolution.